Protection for sale. Hand-tooled pieces. Prescriptions filled. High-quality cams right here. Prescriptions filled right here. Anything you need. Did you say something about drugs? That's right. All the chems you need to fill out your lifestyle. Balance you out. Everyone here buys from me. Sometimes security needs a little psycho, or an engineer needs some Mentats. And heck, Rad X is plain universal. Looking for a job, if you got one. Yeah, I got something. Looking for a mutated fern, if you find any. I hear some grows out near Forest Grove Marsh. Natural radiation sucker. Be great for cooking Rad X or Rad Away. Sweeten the deal with some money, and I might be interested. All right. How about 125 caps? Mutated fern. Sounds good. Cool. Solomon. Hey, man. Got a lot of chems here if you need something to help you relax. Let's see what you got. Chems for a balanced lifestyle. Got chems right here for you, brother. Did you say something about drugs? That's right. All the chems you need to fill out your lifestyle. Balance you out. Everyone here buys from me. Sometimes security needs a little psycho, or an engineer needs some Mentats. And heck, Rad X is plain universal. Looking for a job, if you got one. Yeah, I got something. Looking for a mutated fern, if you find any. I hear some grows out near Forest Grove Marsh. Natural radiation sucker. Be great for cooking Rad X or Rad Away. Sweeten the deal with some money, and I might be interested. All right. How about 125 caps? Come on. Make it worth my while, Solomon. You are one righteous talker. 150 caps. Mutated fern. Sounds good. Cool. Solomon. Hey, man. Got a lot of chems here if you need something to help you relax. Let's see what you have. Self-served medicine.
game by a swatter. Hey. Wait there. Skull in the league, it was Dan a swatter. Sometimes you gotta wonder. Protection for sale! Hands to pieces! Right? What? You mean the railroad? That's a fairy tale, man. They don't exist. Nah, I heard from my cousin. He knows a guy that works for him. They got a code phrase and everything. Follow the Freedom Trail. The hell is that supposed to mean? You're hey, full of swatter, it. Swatter, that swatter, kind of talk swatter, is gonna get you smashed up by the synth. Newcomer, huh? Talk to Abbott at the wall if you want a history lesson. Buy and sell everything to everyone, except synths. No synths allowed here. Shut down this little stuff. Band of yours. Every drop of water that comes out of that filter is 100% pure. Why is a legitimate businessman like myself always got to be hassled by city regulation, huh? It's a health hazard, Shang. It's a profit hazard, is what I say. I manage the water, and I'll do it without your interference. Thank you very much. Hi there. Hey there, purified water. You won't find this out on the Commonwealth. You by yourself out here? That's right, but on my own since I was eight. I'm a fully independent man. Got my own place, go to night classes, the whole shebang. Now, how about I get you a bottle of water, huh? Anything I can do to help out? Ah, the industrious type. Wanna help me clean out the water supply? You won't believe the junk people throw in there. Overloads the filters. Depends. What's this worth to you? Job's 100 caps. But I like you. 125. What kind of stuff is down there? You're looking for big things. Anything around the size of a book, usually. I'm on it. Just don't drown. I'll never clean your carcass out of there.
water pierced around. Sure, let's take a look. Hey, everyone's got a drink, am I right? Everybody, everybody, I need everyone's attention. I would like to address the subject that is on everyone's mind, and that is the disgusting article Piper has written. Diamond City has stood united for over 150 years, and what keeps us united are two things. First is the great green guardian behind me, the wall our protector and our savior from the filth of the outside. And second is our faith and trust in each other, the faith and trust that has given us prosperity, security, and education for every citizen. And while the paper might point their fingers at synths and other ghost stories to drive us apart, we will not betray this sacred trust. Now, I want everyone to hear these next words very carefully. I am not a synth. I am the same flesh and blood boy who grew up on these streets, who was born in a shack just down the waterfront to Martha and Patrick McDonough. And I will not abandon my city due to the heinous allegations of the press. God bless this city. God bless the wall. He's so full of shit. Don't touch the paint. What? Why? This is the wall. The great green guardian that keeps out the bad guys. Uh, no one's broken through the wall. Never! Least we can do for her in return is keep her looking pristine. Thinking you need a little education. Maybe a bit of community service. What do you say? What do you need done? You see this paint I'm using? Only one place left in the whole Commonwealth you can get it. Hardware Town. Rune store close by to the west. Bring back a can of paint and it'll be a hundred caps in your pocket. How's that sound? Only if you throw in some more money. Fine. Pay you 125 caps. I think you can do better than that. 
Driving a hard bargain, huh? 150 caps. What can you tell me about Hardware Town? Raiders moved in a ways back. Security says they can't handle them. That's why I'm running low. So, you still up for it? Paint retrieval. I'm on it. Much obliged. Working hard? Good luck getting that paint. Diamond City surplus. Everything you need. Intimidation factor. Robbers might run off without you even needing to fire. I'm more worried about personal protection. You know, someone coming at you when you're not expecting. Small semi-automatic with a good holster is what you're looking for. Thanks. I'll think about it. Don't walk outside the wall undefended. High quality protection for sale. Hi. You read the paper? Damn sense. Hiding among us. I hear there's a bar in the old theater district that's for raiders only. The combat zone. I'd stay clear if I was you. Told you your luck wouldn't last forever. His ties. Oh, Nick. The bills. Huh. Forget the bills. The photographs. <laughs> he never did photograph well. <laughs> Detective secretary. I'll never find another job. Something wrong? Another stray coming in from the rain. Afraid you're too late. Office is closed. Wait, who are you? You the detective? Me? No, I'm Nick's secretary. Handle his appointments, his papers, that sort of thing. Well, that's what I used to do anyway, but... Now Nick's disappeared, and I can't keep a detective agency open without a detective. Do you have any idea how I could find him? He disappeared working a case. Skinny Malone's gang had kidnapped a young woman, and he tracked them down to their hideout in Park Street Station. There's an old vault down there they use as a base. I told Nick he was walking into a trap, but... He just smiled and walked out the door like he always does. Who's this Skinny Malone character? I don't know much about him, but he's from Good Neighbor, and that means he's in the well-pressed suits and machine gun school of thuggery. Hey, I'd love to help, but there's a small matter of expenses. Money, huh. I, I do have 125 caps in the old rainy day fund. I'll find him. You have my word. Thank you. Nick should be easy to spot. He's always wearing that old hat and trench coat getup. Please, hurry.
Come on. Don't move, Synth. What have you done with the real Riley? Where's my brother? I swear, I'm not a Synth. Don't shoot, for God's sakes, we're family! Put the gun down, now! He's a Synth! He'll kill us all! Kyle, no! Okay, show's over. There are no Synths in Diamond City, hear me? Just you folks and your damn paranoia. Officer? I need you to step away, Scabber. I understand, officer. I just want to know what happened. What, you didn't hear the shouting? Guy pulls a gun on his own brother, thinking he's a synth. It's that newspaper's fault. Got people all riled up, thinking their own family might be replaced by machines. Look, I'm sorry you got caught up in all this, but it's over, okay? Just go about your business like nothing happened. Better that way. What's everyone still standing around for? Go back to your Diamond own Diamond City Security is going to conduct an investigation, right? Myrna. The robot handles the store at night. Bother him. Can't believe you eat that food. Only one thing worth buying in the dugout inn, and that's the booze. Man's gotta eat. What can I say? A real Diamond City boy eats at the noodle stand. <clears throat> Leave me alone. like two out of ten points of danger tops. Now, if you want to talk something really deadly. Jim! Oh, I forgot you were there, Yaki. What is it? You know what? Never mind. I'll handle it myself. <clears throat> hey, what's your story? Mercenary? Caravan guard? I try to protect people, if that's what you mean. Hey, I'm all for the noble road. You know, as long as I'm getting paid. And maybe if there's a beautiful brunette involved. Anyway, I'm just kicking back and sharing stories while I'm between things. I've been all over, seen vaults, pre-war ruins, and plenty of monsters. You've been to a vault? Yeah. Ever heard of Vault 81? They're standoffish, but every once in a while, they'll let new people in. Let's hear your best monster story. I'm from Diamond City. You want to talk something really scary? It's the Institute in their sense. Don't go to University Point. Trust me. You don't want to know what they're capable of. So you explore old ruins? Last place I was going to check out was Salem. Real old town far to the north. Never made it, though. Got a bad feeling about that area. See you around, Hawthorne. <laughs> yeah, take it easy. Oh, a customer. Need a room? What's the story with this place? Not much to say. We sell food, drink, and rooms. Mainly for traders that come to the area. My brother Vadim runs the bar. Scarlet's our waitress, and she helps me keep the rooms clean. As much as they can be. Maybe later. Whatever you say. See this bar? I killed a man for it. <laughs> no, no, I kid, I kid. <coughs> he is dead, though. 
<laughs> now, let me know when you're ready to order. So, this your bar? Damn straight it is. My brother Yefim and I make the best moonshine in the entire Commonwealth. We call it Bobrov's Best. Had to start renting out rooms just so customers uh, had a place to safely pass out after drinking it. <laughs> Maybe later. Eh, your call. Don't bother, pal. I ain't seen nothing, I ain't heard nothing. Whatever you want, I ain't got time. Hi there. You can order drinks and food here or at the bar. Who owns this bar, anyway? The Bobrov brothers picked this place up a few years ago. Uh, Vadim Bobrov is the loud one, Yefim Bobrov is the quiet one, and I'm the one that has to listen to them argue with each other all day. I've got a few minutes to browse. Everything's cooked or brewed here. Yeah? You have marvelous bone structure. Stop by the mega surgery sometime. My dad says not to talk to strangers. Hey, sweetie. I want to be left alone. Hey. Hold position. You read that article? Public occurrences? Damn sense could be anywhere. This is what I like about you, Mummy. You know what you are. Not trying to be anything other than helpful. Not like those people down there. Lower field workers always want what they haven't earned. Oh, an astute observation, sir. Let me just freshen your glass again. Thank you, Mummy. Program to serve, but in your case, I shall do so disdainfully. Let me know when you're ready to order. There a problem? No problem at all. My programming dictates that I serve all customers in the colonial tap house, even those that obviously don't belong. Just know that my senses indicate that you have dangerously low levels of class for this establishment. Just looking. Oh, God, it's trying to think it over. Darcy, let's go. Take it easy. I don't think she wants to leave just yet. Hey, this is between me and my wife. Why don't you mind your own damn business for once? Oh, God, Paul, why do you always have to make a scene? Pour me another drink, Henry. Damn it. Darcy, I just want you to come home. I'll be home. Later. I can't believe you'd do this to me, Cook. Do what to you, Paul? You smug bastard. You keep away from my wife, God damn it. You'd better get out of here before you do something stupid. You son of a bitch! Don't hurt him, Henry! Go on. Get out of here. I'll be at home, Darcy, taking care of our son. Sorry, I what had were you to arguing that. about? It's really none of your business. It's usually a lot quieter around here. 
perfect place to drink, if you're buying. Darcy, don't be rude to my customers. You see, Darcy here likes to relax and enjoy life from time to time, and her husband Paul doesn't. He's not a bad guy, really. Just a little uptight. Too bad he can't learn to relax, huh, Darcy? Shut up. I don't come here to talk about Paul. You there! I haven't seen you in here before. Why don't you make yourself useful and buy me a drink or something? You don't look like you need another drink. Aren't you all high and mighty, then? Why don't you get lost so I can drink in peace? Lighten up, Darcy. This isn't your own private bar, no matter what you might think. Now, can I get you something to drink? So is this your place? That's right. Owner, bartender, sympathetic ear. I try to provide a little oasis from the hardships of life. Name's Cook, by the way. Henry Cook. Let me know if I can get you anything. Just looking. Okay, let me know. I hope you're drinking, because if you're not, well, I really can't help you. Hey, I think those Bobrov brothers are looking for you. I wanted so much more from my life than this. Ugh. Heads up. Moving out. <clears throat> Don't let my husband drag you into any of his nonsense. Need new clothes? Should stop by Fallon's basement. Open during the day. I'm not supposed to talk to people I don't know. Hey. Over here. Move here. Stay there. All right, you. Tell me. Diamond City Radio? It's terrible, yes? It makes you want to cut your own ears off. I don't think I noticed. You listen to it. It grates on ears like sandpaper. This DJ Travis, he is disaster. Something must be done, and soon. We will have customers suiciding before long. Vadim! It's true. Don't listen to my brother. Someone needs to get rid of him. We need a new DJ for the radio. I don't think many would notice if he, you know, disappeared.
Are you serious? Did we not just agree this is serious problem? Calls for serious solution. First, you get him to follow you out of town. All right, that's enough. Vadim isn't serious. He doesn't really want to kill Travis. Okay, what's really going on here? Sorry, we were just joking around a bit. <laughs> it's true. Only jokes. Travis is a good friend. Yefim and I worry about him. Well, Travis, he, he means well, but he does not have the confidence he needs for that job. Or anything else, really. And so he's always awkward. He does not believe in himself, you see? He expects he will fail at everything, and so he does. So, are you actually trying to do something about it? I tell you themes that I have planned. He does not believe me. You, you and I work on plan. Go on, spoil sport. Go back to working. We will figure out how to help Travis. Come, you. Meet me in back room. We discuss plan. Beat it. If you don't live here, you ain't nobody. Got it? What do you want, Vadim? I am glad you are willing to help. Unlike my deadbeat brother, Travis is a good guy. He deserves better life. I'm just waiting to hear your idea. Travis needs a boost of confidence. You know what does that for him? Winning a bar fight. I'm sure you've been in one, yes? Haven't met a man I couldn't lay out. Excellent! Because you are going to help Travis win his first fight. I want to stage fight here in Dugout. Nothing too serious. Uh, we make sure Travis wins and feels good about himself after. I want you to be there to help make it look real. What do you think? Sound good to you? Gonna need some more information. Okay. I have this all thought out. I have contacts, people I can count on, real tough looking, but they will take a dive for money. They confront Travis here at dugout. You step in and give him push he needs to stand up to them. Then you and Travis take them down. Nothing gets too rough, and Travis is something he can feel good about. Simple, right? If the goons are getting paid to fight, I want some too. All right, fine. You get cut as well. One hundred cops. Why involve me in this? You have seen Travis, yes? <laughs> he cannot fight alone. Not even fake one. He needs help. You can help him. I have everything ready by six o'clock. Travis should be here by then. You show up and it will go well. Promise. If you're hungry, we sell. Heads up. On me.
Professor, I have a new theory about how the Institute makes the synths. Oh, no. We've been talking about this, remember? After last time, the shouting, me sleeping on the cold floor of the lab for three nights. That was your choice. And seriously, growing synths from the ground using recombinant plant nuclei? I mean, how could they even? Ah, uh ha! -huh. You do want to talk about it. Uh, oh, look, we have a visitor, Dr. Duff Deer. If you could bother them while I walk away from this conversation. Hi there. Are you here for today's free biology lesson? Sure, sounds fun. Yes, love that enthusiasm. Now, we all talk about radiation like it's a single thing, but it's actually a term referring to dozens of different ionizing rays. You have X-rays, beta rays, gamma rays, but which one are we most worried about? The one most associated with the big old bombs 200 years ago. Gamma rays? That's right. Now, gamma rays are bad, really bad. If your body absorbs too much of that kind of radiation, you'll suffer from fatigue, anemia, even death. But some life forms have been living with gamma radiation exposure for two centuries now, and they've adapted. Neat, huh? What kinds of things have adapted to radiation? Oh, that's the perfect segue into the field trip portion of the lesson. Are you ready? Sign me up. You're gonna go out and find a bloatfly gland. You see, the oversized bloatfly of today evolved from an earlier species of a smaller fly. Radioactive adaptation has resulted in a unique gland that enables it to balance and maintain speed despite its size. So what do you say? Ready to go out and dissect one? I do a job. I get paid. Money? Oh. Um... How about, uh, 125 caps? We're talking hunting a giant mutated bug. There's risks. That would explain why some students don't come back. How about 150 caps? Get the blowfly gland. Got it. Remember, bring the gland back in one piece. Oh, and don't chew on it. One of the students got horribly sick because of that mistake. Professor. Dr. Duff handles all the visitors. Bother her. Dissecting a bloatfly can be fun. Just avoid getting stung to death, and you'll be a junior scientist in no time. Have fun out there, and don't get killed! That'd be bad for progress.
Come back once you have that float fly gland and you'll earn that prize. You there. I, um, I have a question for you. What do you want? You were in the tap house before, when... You got beaten up by the bartender. Yeah. Good old Henry Cook. Everybody's best pal. Especially Darcy's. I'm supposed to pretend I don't know he's sleeping with her until he decides he's bored with her and she comes crawling back home to me. So, where do I come in? I'm going to go back and talk to him, and I want you to come with me. You saw? He won't take me seriously otherwise. I don't want to have to really hurt him, I just want him to leave Darcy alone. You're going to have to make it worth my while. Uh, well, okay. I can only pay you 80 caps right now, but I'll scrape together more after we take care of Cook. If you're just gonna talk to him... Why do you need me along? I don't want to hurt Cook, but if he doesn't listen to me, I don't know what I might do. He won't dare act so smug when he sees you at my back, and then nobody has to get hurt. Paul, will you help me talk to Cook? Get him to leave my wife alone. Okay, I'll help you. Okay, good, good. I'm sure Cook will back down once he sees you're with me. This will work better if I talk to Cook by myself. You're probably right. I am so angry at Cook, I might lose control. Just get him to leave Darcy alone. I'll get it done, no matter what. Good. Don't kill him if you don't have to, but otherwise, I don't care what you do to him. He deserves to suffer for what he's done.
today's Halloween. But do we get treats? No. It's all tricks all day. Look alive. Stay there, boy. Word is something bad went down in the old museum of witchcraft up near Salem. Why would anyone even go there? Been abandoned forever. I'll meet you there then. Don't be late. Yeah, yeah, I'll be there. I just have to close up. Excuse me. Are you lost? We need to talk, Cook. Oh yeah? Is there some kind of problem? Are you sleeping with Paul Pembroke's wife? I really don't see what business it is of yours who I'm sleeping with. Paul asked me to talk to you, so here I am, asking nicely. And I'm asking you, nicely, to turn back around and go tell Paul to come talk to me himself, if he's man enough. Think this through. Darcy isn't worth dying for. Or killing for. You know what? You're right. This whole thing with Darcy and me. Bad idea. I admit it. Not like I planned it or anything. She was just always hanging around here. You know how it is. Look. Tell Paul it's over. I swear. I won't even let her in my bar anymore. Is that good enough for you? That's a good start. Something more concrete would help. Yeah, okay. I get it. I have an idea. Something I've been thinking about for a while already. Kill two birds with one stone, you know? What's the idea? Here's the deal. I have some other, um, businesses on the side. One of them is helping Nelson Latimer spend his dad's money to make himself feel like a gangster. Who's Nelson Latimer? Malcolm's kid. An arrogant little pissant. But useful, since he has all the money in the world and likes to think of himself as a budding crime boss. Me and Nelson are supposed to be meeting some gentleman from Good Neighbor to exchange Nelson's cash for their chems. My plan is simple. We take the money and the chems. I'm in. Let's do this. Now you're talking. I promise, you won't regret it. In a few hours, we're both going to be sitting pretty. If you're hungry, you can grab a quick bite of power news. Just to talk to the robot. Look alive. Let's go.
See those big lights? That's right. Working electricity. Nelson's starting to think he doesn't need me. We're late. But I'm sure Trish won't hand over the chems until I get there. You see, I'm the one she trusts. Here we are. The meat is just ahead. But there's always four of Morowski's goons. Trish, who's in charge, and then three other guys to unload the boat and wave their guns around. You should be able to work your way around these buildings to get a good angle on them. I'll wait for the shooting to start, then join in from here. Remember, we can't afford to let anybody get away. What about Nelson? I'll deal with Nelson. You worry about Morowski's crew. Now, are we all set? Sounds good. the one jerking you around. I'm here right on time. You make sure to tell Morowski that. Sure, whatever. We're sitting ducks out here. Just asking for some gunners or something to come strolling in. Maybe you're in the wrong line of business. If this makes you so nervous. I'm nervous because we're sitting here with our asses hanging out thanks to your stupid partner. Hi. Who the let me deal you? with this, fool? You better get the fuck out of here if you know what's good for you. Cook sent me. He has a message for you. Cook told you about this? Where the hell is Cook anyway? What is this, Nelson? Are you gonna hand over the money in chems, or do I have to kill you? Are you serious? Kill this asshole! <laughs> Cook! 
You bastard! Morosi's going to kill you for this. Oh, I think you have more immediate problems. Wait, I can help you. This here is nothing compared to what's at Morosi's chem lab. What's at this chem lab? More chems than you can imagine. Morowski's entire stash. But you'll never find it without my help. Tell me what you know first. Well, okay. I'm trusting you, right? The lab is in the old Forley fish packing plant on the waterfront in South Boston. What's so secure about that? The place is overrun with feral ghouls. Which don't even look twice at my crew, cause they're all ghouls like me. My idea, by the way. I assume there's more to it than getting past the ferals. You assume, right. The real security is a system of tripwires that have to be triggered in exactly the right order to open the door to the lab. You never even know the lab was there when the door is closed. You seem awfully proud of this lab. Yeah, I am. Morowski's operation wouldn't be nothing without me. There's a terminal that will bypass the tripwires and open the door to the lab. And I have the password. So, I have your promise, right? If I give you the password, you let me walk? And you promised to not tell Morowski that I had anything to do with this? Yeah, yeah, of course. I already told you. After I leave here, I've never heard of you in my life. The password is Applejack. There. Now you've got everything. And I'm completely screwed forever. I hope you can live with that. Sorry, Trish. So that's that. I told you it was no problem. The money should still be on Nelson's body. And then there's these chems, which you'll need to sell somehow. But that's your problem now. I'm leaving town, for good. Should make things easier for Paul to have me gone. Plus, there's no plausible way I could explain to Morowski how I wasn't involved in this unless I die here along with everyone else. What are you going to do now? Uh, I think I'll just keep that to myself. But don't worry, I've been planning this move for a while. I'll be fine. 